had the Webra 40 silver line. This is video three. I've already run two tanks through it for break-in. Um, first tank was about quarter throttle on the rich side. Second tank was just above a low idle on the rich side. Um, it really doesn't need any tuning because it was running, it was idling really low, running good. But now, as you can see, you know, the first video, you can see that it was difficult for me to flip start it. Matter of fact, I, I couldn't. But now, I mean, I have broke the engine in per the manufacturer's recommendations. I am going to run some more fuel through it. Because I have it on the test stand, why not? And, uh, but as of now, it should be broken and good to go. And like I said, when I get done with uh, running this today, I will uh, put the flow igniter on there, flip it over until I get it doesn't fire whatsoever. So I know all the nitro is out of the engine. And I will put after run oil on it, which is basically automatic transmission fluid, Dextron. Um, great rust inhibitor. Some people will use 3 in 1 oil or something like that. Read the back of that bottle. That is corrosive to a lot of rubbers and things like that. 3 in 1 oil is not something I would put in one of my engines uh, ever. Uh, there's rubber parts in there, there's brass parts in there, there's aluminum parts in there, there's steel parts in there. So uh, use something that's not going to attack anything in the engine, rubber, or any of the other materials. And again, it's very important to break your engine in. If you do it, your engine will run better, last longer, uh, and you get more enjoyment out of it. And never take apart a brand new engine. There's no, there's no point in it. Um, if you want to see what's inside the engine, get out the book that came with it, or Google it. All right, well, we'll fire this up and let it run a little bit. And like I was saying on my other videos, there is no idle screw on a Weber Silverline. None. Even back in the 80s and 90s, some engine manufacturers got away from it because the radios were good enough to where you had a kill switch on your transmitter. I myself don't like pinching a fuel line or throwing a rag in an engine to get it to quit. Never take a brand new engine out of the box and expect it to run perfectly. Have a little patience with it. Read the, you know, the instructions that come with these is usually a page or two. Do the break-in process. Run it out a little on the rip side. Once you get done running it, um, make sure you put the glow starter on it. Flip it over to get the fuel out of the engine, the nitro, because it's corrosive. And make sure you put after run oil in it and flip it over a few times to make sure it coats everything in there. And uh, you should never have to replace a bearing or anything. But here we'll get a, see if we get it fired up here. I think I'm just going to let it burn that tank up. A little extra break, you ain't going to hurt anything. Another thing I try to do when I break in an engine, this is really eight the instructions. Some, some, some manufacturers do, but not all. But I try not to get the engine too hot. You know, I don't break an engine in, you know, in July. You know, I do it, it's, it's fall here, just about, and it's a little cooler out. And I can actually hold my hand on that engine. temperatures down. I got a uh, little bigger prop than what I'll fly on this, but it's a really low pitch. It's like a four pitch.
I guess not. But, anyway. That's the engine. Weber 40 Silver Line. This is the good one. This one here is, uh, it's got the brass bushing on the rod. The ones that didn't have that had a little trouble with them getting sloppy. Um, usually, if you, uh, if you're buying an engine like this, do a little research on it. Um, the German and Weber is a very good engine, even the one without the brass in the rod. Uh, this will this will outlive me. But now you can see it's got compression. The first video I made, you, you couldn't tell where the compression was. And again, don't take apart a brand new engine. Don't put three in one oil on it. Uh, you know, Air 2 oil, that's not bad. It's a little more expensive than Dextron uh, automatic transmission fluid, but it'll work. Uh, air 2 oil is designed to be, you know, in contact with rubber things because a lot of air tools have rubber gaskets and whatnot in them. Um, but 3 in 1 oil, I would not recommend using that. Uh, not to mention, it's kind of a cheap, shitty oil anyway. If I had a rusted bolt or something that turned hard, I might put a 3 in 1 on it. Probably not. But you can see that it's a good engine. Break it in. Don't take an engine out of the box and make a video of you sitting there next to it uh, saying you've never seen, feel, nothing, and not be able to flip start it and then uh, judge the engine uh, and, and cast the blame on the engine because you didn't read the book and do what the book recommended you to do. Follow the instructions. Have a good one.